This is the final word World Cup Daily Day 5 at New Zealand, Netherlands, Orange and Black, Tigerland. Jeff Lemon and Adam Collins with you. Brought to you by Westfield, London, Westfield, Stratford City, more extra, less ordinary. Adam, please tell me all about this one-day international in the space of 30 seconds. All right, New Zealand batted. It wasn't a particularly fast start. Far from it. They didn't score from the first three overs. Then they got into the groove by Conway and then Ravindra. And they had uh, the opener, Wu Young, make a half-century 70 from memory. They had six scores between uh, 30 and 70, which was the highest score on the day, 322. They benefited from 13 from the final ball. We'll explain that a little bit later on. New Zealand. Uh, then were able to defend that comfortably, uh, restricting the Netherlands to 223 all out deep into the reply. They won by 99 runs. Uh, and Sartner, who hit 30 odd towards the end with the bat, picked up five wickets with the ball. Only New Zealand's second spinner to take a five wicket haul in a one day international. Job done. Only the second to take a five wicket haul in a one day international. Second spinner Remarkable. after Daniel Vittori. If I second heard that, spinner. if I heard that correctly yeah. on the telly, uh, which I, you know, it might be the second in a World Cup. Although I suspect maybe it was a World Cup. Maybe it's a yeah, World Cup five, because I'm, I'm sure there have been. I reckon even Nathan McCullum took a five <laughs> at one point. Um, I, can't, I can't swear to it, but it's just a, a little vibe ringing in the back of my head that suggests that that is true. Yeah, this this was interesting. I mean, the Dutch, the, the run chase was unimpressive, um, let's call it as it is. I don't, I don't say this often, but didn't want it enough. Um, it, well, there was there was a lack of, of kind of the boldness to go after it, but I thought the Dutch were impressive with the ball first up in the way that they were able to hold New Zealand back. I mean, yes, three maidens off the top, that's a nice start, um, but then New Zealand do that thing that they do, even even though Conway makes a mid-range sort of score and gets out. Ravindra goes on, makes a half century to add to the 100 they made the other day. Will Young makes runs after that first ball duck um, in unfortunate circumstances when the guys either side of him made hundreds. And New Zealand at one point are set up for an absolute monster score mm. when they're, you know, they're one down for absolutely bloody heaps. And you know they've got firepower to come in down the order. So at that point you're thinking, well, you know, they, they could be going absolutely huge. The Dutch do pretty well to kind of rein them back in through that back half of the innings, just kept chipping away, priced out a few wickets um, here and there every few overs, and then it just gets away from them really in, in, in the last over of the game. Look, this is dream come true stuff for New Zealand. They needed to win their first game, then they needed to take a chunk out of uh, a chunk of net run rate out of this one. Now they move on to, to Bangladesh and Afghanistan, and they're every chance of being four and zip. So they've they've nailed the start of the tournament, having started like or having come into this um, looking a bit ropey mm. in England a couple of weeks ago. As for the Dutch, like I'm reminded of that old uh, that old uh, saying about New Zealand, Graham Gooch saying that facing New Zealand in the Hadley era was the World Eleven at one end and the Ilford seconds at the other end. Like I sometimes get that vibe from the from the Dutch. Like, they look absolutely world class in ways that associate nations at fifty over World Cups haven't always. Like there are just moments, there are sprinkles of it, where they look like they're just like they're this, they're, they're within touching distance of being mm. not just competitive but winning actual games in the tournament. Then they have passages of play which look ropey and look like a side that ha haven't gelled well enough to be competitive on this stage. So we, we've got that contrast. I suppose that the good thing about it being uh, a draw where there are nine group games is they'll improve on the way through, and I still think they'll win something at some stage. But yeah, New Zealand. This was a game they had to just come out and. And, and defend clinically with the ball, and, and so they did. And I think Sartner being in the comp early means an awful lot too. So he took wickets with a variation in speed, a bit like Jadeja yesterday, right? So Jadeja, it was with quicker balls and with slower balls through the air, and so it proved for Sartner today around the wicket. Took a wicket with a ball at 77 kilometres an hour, which is quite slow, and one at 94 kilometres an hour, which is quite quick. So he's got that that range of movement, if you like, within his action. Uh, and we've always known that he is their class banker in this form of the game. They move to Chennai for their next match. So he'll probably have uh, company via East Shodi. I can't see them not going into that with two all out-and-out specialist spinners. But, um, yeah, as they leave Hyderabad, they do so uh, having gotten just about everything right here. Even if they, they will have to find room for Kane Williamson, and that might require an awkward conversation somewhere in the top six. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to happen somewhere. There, there was, you know, they were sort of floating the possibility that maybe that squeeze gets put onto Mark Chapman. I, I doubt that because he's been so dynamic through the middle order. I, I still think it's it's Will Young who's like, okay, yes, you've made a half century um, against one of the the attacks that you should be able to make runs against, right? Without, uh, I know that sounds condescending, but actually, uh, sure. I mean, the, the Dutch bowled really well today. It, obviously, people who watch this show know that you and I are generally pretty neutral, but 
we want the Dutch to win. We want them to beat somebody. We want them to we want them to claim a, a victim or two on the way through at least. Yeah. Um, and and there there were bursts of that today. The way um, Roloff van der Merwe came on and. Uh, and, and operated in that really cagey sort of strategic way that he does with the ball um, and took another absolute belter of a catch yeah. to get rid of Chapman, incidentally. He's got a real highlight reel of those, um, Van der Merwe, the, the, the one at short third that he took in the T20 World Cup. Mm. And this one was a different position on the ground, but similarly running back with the flight of the ball, Nick Rewalt style, um, not worried about the oncoming traffic, you know, into the pack and, and held on to it um, as it was sort of slashed away by the left-hander over cover. Uh, there's, there are those bits of impressiveness, um, Paul van Meeker and the, the, the way that he, he cleaned up the stumps. Right towards the end there, it was Daryl Mitchell, wasn't it, who, yep. who played the pull shot over the top of the ball and, and lost his pegs. Right when Mitchell was looking really dangerous, you know, he, he thunders a big six down the ground off Van der Merwe and, uh, and, and, and cracks a, a couple of other shots and uh, you know, is this player who's got this new lease on life as a one-day international player. Um, so, so there are those moments, and, and obviously Buzz the leader is the sort of spiritual leader as well as the de leader of this team, and he, everything went pretty well up until the last ball of the innings when he bowled a, a beamer about yeah. yay high that sat and slashed away for six, um, free hit, bowled it again, low full toss, hit down the ground for six more, so 13 off the last ball, as you said, and he was walking off just cursing, you know, audibly and volubly cursing himself, you know, couldn't believe that he'd, he'd, he'd let that slip. New Zealand had got just past 300, but they ended up, you know, a, a fair bit further ahead. Yeah, so 322, uh, yeah, it's kind of the, the worst possible result from the final ball, the, the waist high full toss, and... And consecutive sixes there to, to give uh, Sartner 36 not out from 17 balls. Yeah, I tend to agree that Will Young might get squeezed, although interesting that Jimmy Neesham didn't get picked today. So they're backed mm. in Chapman, who struggled. Five from 13 in those middle overs. He was eventually uh, dismissed by Dutt, one of two wickets for a spinner who's able to bowl uh, early doors. Um, Van der Merwe, I just love his wicket celebrations and I enjoy the way that he attributed the strangle down the leg side to get Ravindra for 51, so a ton then a 50, so he's going very nicely batting at number three. And so the fact that there was a misfield from mm -hmm. the delivery that brought up the half century at a deep mid-wicket, uh, the ball went through the legs of Vikram Singh uh, and as a consequence of that, Ravindra was back on strike and next ball um, edged down the leg side. Great take from Edwards, the captain and wicketkeeper, moving away to his right. That was superb stuff. So that, that's the... There are positives there for the Netherlands. They should have kept them inside yeah. 300 or there and thereabouts. But, yeah, they just weren't in it in the chase with the exception of Colin Ackerman, who has played so much high-level competitive cricket across the journey, um, making 69 there. But when he was dismissed, I think from memory it was 147 for five or something along those lines. And it was always going to be too much yeah. for them from, from that point on. So, yeah, the, the, the who, who makes way for... Williamson, yeah, I still think it's probably young, although um, yeah, they, they'd want Chapman in form, right? They don't want to be carrying a guy whose yep. eye means so much to his game. He's going to be the finisher, and for finishers, I know they can blow a bit hot and cold, but um, yeah, that, that, that'll, be, that'll be something they factor in, I reckon, given that Jimmy Neesham, who can also finish with the best of them, is sitting on the bench. Yeah, I mean, there is that, that firepower, slightly different sort of style of hitter, whereas Chapman can be really inventive um, and sort of use angles and ha has had a terrific run in the T20 side as well relatively recently. The, the Dutch chase, I was just annoyed by the Dutch chase. It, it, it was, it, it was they, they were that bit hesitant, that bit tentative about how to go about it, how to attack it, but because they are a team that can run down 300, yeah. right? Like, and, and we saw what they did against Scotland to qualify. We saw what, what they did through the qualifying tournament. They've had some of those really bold kind of innings where they've, they've thrown uh, all, all sort of worry and fear away and they've just gone into it and laid into it. They didn't do that today. They looked like initially like they were trying to play sensibly and so on. It, it, there was good bowling off the top, of course. Trent bowled, bowled well. Matt Henry... Yeah. Um, beautiful like every time Matt Henry is in this side it makes me happier a happier person hot Matt Henry summer is not a season <laughs> it's a state of mind and it, and it goes all year round um, you know bold gorgeously off the top but Max O'Dowd out there who's a the kind of player who does like to boom a, a couple of drives away you know he's not a 150 strike rate sort of opener he'll often take his time a bit but he will hit a few big shots 
during those power play overs. Couldn't do it. They were one for 35 after 10. O'Dowd was really frustrated um, and then got out almost immediately after the, the, the power play had finished. Um, you know, Santner coming on as soon as the field was allowed to go back and striking. So, and, and from that point on, and Colin Ackerman, look, I've got a bit of beef with Colin Ackerman. He plays those sort of innings where he makes a nice score and it looks good on the scoreboard, but he doesn't push the issue, doesn't force the issue when it needs to be forced. And, and at the point where he was passing 50, they were so far behind that there was no way they were going to be able to get there unless Scott Edwards pulled an absolute miracle out of his ass. And, and it was like, OK, well, you could lose the game earlier if you pushed a bit harder, but you're kind of guaranteeing that you won't be able to win it later by failing to push earlier, if that makes any sense. No, what we're seeing in the tournament is a trend that teams are happy to go up broadly five and over for the first half and, and mm. work on the basis that they'll catch up. We saw a lot of that in 2015, whereas in 2019, we saw teams go a bit harder at the start and try and take it more consistently through the 50 overs. So that's just a rhythm thing, I reckon. Um, but yeah, they needed to go at 8.4 and over for the second half of their chase, and that was never going to happen. And Ackerman was one of two Dutch batters out for like kind of the reverse switch hit jobbies around the corner. Um, great mm -hmm. catch from Trent Bolt to get rid of Baz Delita, by the way, which should be noted on the way through. A bit of a jiggery-pokery jobby over the boundary line, which... You know, shows uh, bolts all around class, and again, like that's a, a big moment because if the Dutch are going to go close, they're going to need the leader um, to be the one striking at that higher rate that you're referring to uh, there before, like 150s or thereabouts, when they've got to go at, you know, the better part of nine and over, which would have been the equation had the leader still been there. So, um, yeah, they're, they're Norton too, but uh, there is enough there. Um, and uh, in a 14 team World Cup, which of, which of what it'll be four years from now, and, and rightly so, there'll be other teams who can have this opportunity on the big stage which um, it's not mm. patronising to say that what the Dutch do here will inform what they do over the next four years it isn't a development school a World Cup but um, they've had to fight bloody hard to get here but the probability of yep. them making the semi-final is next to nothing yeah, I mean, they're, they're in this tournament on merit Absolutely. because this tournament was expressly designed to make sure that they weren't there. <laughs> they're not supposed to be here. That is not the ICC's plan uh, for the Dutch to be showing up. But but here they are and, and they're sticking it up, everybody. So um, that's a, a happy sight to see. I think it's time to get to the final word, Hall of Fame. It sure is, Jeff. The final word, Hall of Fame, is brought to you by Westfield London and Westfield Stratford City. Kids eat free. It's back. It's back at Westfield London, Westfield Stratford City at half term. So if the action on the field has given you a hankering for some international cuisine, mm -hmm. there's no better time to fill your tum. I said yesterday, fill your turn. I, I read it incorrectly. Fill, I, I read it on my like, turn. What am I saying? Fill your tum. Uh, fill your turn. Fill your fill turn. Your turn. Oh, well, when you, when you said it yesterday, I heard it as eat kids free. Um, which seems like you know, maybe at a mall for giants, um, that might be the thing. But probably everybody else don't do that. Um, not advised. Not happening at Westfield. There, there is no cannibalism at Westfield. I'm 100% confident in saying that. No, don't eat your kids. Eat the rich. From family favourites like Bill's mm. to the reimagined Indian street food of Bindas Eatery, there's more variety than Ravi Chandran Ashwin's seemingly endless bag of tricks. This is a great line here from Sharon. Uh, and with dozens of places for the whole family to skate, bowl, golf, bat and more, there's really no better place for a half-term day out than Westfield London or Westford Stratford City. More extra, less ordinary. I am going to the skating. I'm going to the, um, the uh, <laughs> with oh, yeah. my coordination, I'm going to slash myself alive somehow, to the ice skating opening night. I'm taking um, the girls with me in a couple of weeks' time. So... Um, that's going to be my treat. Not quite half term uh, with kids in nursery and so on. But still, the advertising's got to me, Jeff. Um, I love it. Westfield, London, Westfield, Stratford City. Uh, tell us about your final word moment of the day. Um, right. I, I, well, I had a few little things floating around. I enjoyed that there was a Muhammad Azharuddin stand. It's nice that after a, you know, a, a life of um, varied contributions to cricket, you can still get a stand named after you. And, and that VVS Lakshman gets a much smaller pavilion. You know, it's a little bit like the, uh, the Gambia stand and the, the smaller Virat Kohli pavilion in Delhi. And there are some interesting choices made w when it comes to how things get named. Um, and Surab Ganguly on the, on the ad breaks here. Um, I was watching on the telly in India, flogging all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 a, not afraid to get involved. Um, Amitabh Bachchan, Bachchan is always there as well. He's, he's in his 80s now, the, the, the Bollywood actor, and he, he's on every second advertisement on Indian TV. But um, maybe Saurav will take over once he finally exits stage left. Uh, Jeff, I'm keeping tabs on all the pronunciations of Baz the leader, or Baz the leader, as we heard from Dirk Nannis yesterday. And I, and I, and I as I said um, with Cam, I trust Dirk to have done his homework. So I, I'm tipping it's probably Buzz, 
the leader. What I don't think it is, is the, la- Plus, the, yeah. the leader. I heard the leader today um, to go with the lady um, from uh, Ramiz Raja the other day. So we'll, we'll keep tabs on how many pronunciations of Baz or Buzz we can get through the course of, of the competition. I gather on our Discord page, uh, there have been uh, there has been a voice note left uh, for all of the different pronunciations. So Jeff, mm-hmm. when you're commentating on the Netherlands, uh, when you do your work on them, I, I urge yep. you to consult that um, later in the tournament. Um, oh, look, I, I've, I've already have a subtle knife as our Dutch correspondent, um, but yeah, it, it's it's basically the leather um, because you, you, the vowels work slightly different. So and and you, your vans are actually fun. So you have fun maker and the leather and so forth. And it, it's pretty straightforward, really. Dutch isn't that hard. Uh, I um, I like that uh, O'Dowd had a piece of paper on the field with him for all the matchups on there for what the bowlers should do at different times. A bit like a, a football goalkeeper in a penalty shootout having which way he should jump on the back of his uh, water bottle. I was noting on, on Test Match Special Alex Hartley that Mark Watt was doing that a lot last year in the T20 World Cup and, and the Dutch uh, following uh, in the steps of their mm-hmm. associate colleagues, Scotland and rivals, I should say. I think they've got a healthy rivalry, the Dutch and the Scots. Now, yeah. I also need to say sorry to Joel Wilson. I'm sorry, Joel Wilson. Uh, um, I um, teed That's off I teed off on Joel Wilson with the stumping. Um, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Latham's, who made a half century, by the way, Latham's uh, hands in front of the stumps uh, when the ball went into it was the assessment. Also, it was explained on telly. Um, I've consulted the MCC. It was a correct decision. Uh, Law 27, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, says that if any part of the wicketkeeper is in front of the stumps at any time after the ball becomes live. Any time. At any yes. time the ball becomes live, therefore. So it didn't matter that Latham had the presence of mind to pull his gloves back. The issue was that at one stage that broke the it mm-hmm. broke the plane, only by a centimetre or otherwise. So when Ian Smith on telly and me on social media um, got stuck into poor old Joel, we were incorrect in doing so, even if that does mm-hmm. look like one of those quirky parts of the laws that don't quite feel right in the application of them, but that's not the umpire's fault. The law is the law in this particular case. You can't go in front of the stumps as a wicketkeeper until the ball has hit some part of the batter or it has passed the stumps. That's it. That's the only time you can do it. So he was correct. Yeah, because the gloves went in front of the stumps, then came back and, and took the ball. Um, I, and, and I liked... So when it happened, when, when the ruling came through, they, they, they ruled it as a wicket because the batter's like four metres down the track goes wandering off, finally gets overruled. They've gone to an ad break, of course. You come back from the ad break and they're still, the, the heads-up display still has the previous over listed um, with, with the wicket as the, the final delivery, but the player's coming back. Right. And, and, you can, and you get the ruling from, from Joel and, and he says, not out. And, he, and Ian Smith wasn't on the mic at this point. You can hear him at the back of the box and he goes, oh, you are kidding me! <laughs> you can audibly... <laughs> comes through from the back of the box, uh, which was which was pretty hilarious at the time. Uh, Daryl Mitchell, I like Daryl Mitchell's bit where he absolutely nailed a straight drive into the stumps. You see that happen, but mm. I've never seen someone hit it into the other stumps as hard mm. as he did, and the ball just stopped dead, um, basically. And, and cost so, him a 50. Yeah, Paul Van Meeker and, well, it cost him... Uh, he, he was out for 48, <laughs> Mitchell. He bowled by Van Meeker, and it should have been at least two, if mm. not four. It would have been another half century for Mitchell. Yep. But Van Maker and just turned around and put his hands together at Mitchell and nodded, bowed to him and said, thank you. <laughs> namaste. <laughs> Which I thought was a nice touch. <laughs> and namaste. And, uh, and the other one is, is, I've never really noticed this before, but Tom Latham's batting face, is he doing a kind of Rory Burns get both eyes around sort of ah. thing? He sort of it like tilts off to one side and he gets even more squinty. He's a bit squinty usually, but he, he looks like the winking emoji um, when he's batting these days. I don't know what's going on there, but maybe... Just get some eye drops, Tom. Maybe the Black Caps have had the optometrist in that. That's how um, Burns ended mm. up doing that because Surrey had them turn a bit more. Anyway, it's a, a whole other thing, a whole other competition uh, to come. Uh, the Netherlands have an eight-day break, an eight-day break in India, and their next game's at Dharamshala. They can hang out in McLeod Gunge. They can smoke weed with the Dalai Lama. You know, they're going to have a grand old mm-hmm. time up there. Um, Friday is when New Zealand next play against Bangladesh at Chennai. They'll need two or three or four spinners for that engagement, you would think. Tomorrow, blockbuster. England-Bangladesh could be Tiger time again, Jeff. And if they win at Dharamshala, and and speaking of um, Dharamshala, the the field's a fucking sandpit. So uh, good luck there. Uh, As Johnny Burstow said in his press conference today, I hope nobody does a Simon Jones from the Gabba in 2002. And the second game of the Tuesday doubleheader is Pakistan and Sri Lanka. So I'll have 
Cam Ponsonby with me for the first show. Jeff, you'll have somebody with you in India for the second show. What's I've the got plan Bharat there? with me for the second got show. Bharat with yeah. you for the second show. So both games will be accounted for. Um, okay, that's it. We're all done. New Zealand are two and zip. The Netherlands yet to get off the mark. This has been the final World World Cup daily for London and Stratfield, Westfield. Said the wrong way. You know what I'm talking about. Catch you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll do.